Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to Elite Currency. My name is Chris. Today we're going to take a look at the Forex market and technical analysis and uh, of course some potential trading opportunities. First of all though, be aware of this risk disclaimer. It explains that trading for exchange on global financial markets is considered high risk, may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. If you're continuing watching this webinar or uh, recording, you agree with this disclaimer, plus you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, uh, perhaps Nedit uh, and I are known by you through Admiral Markets, for instance. Uh, perhaps you know us from FX Street or Forex Factory, whatever the case is. Uh, we hope that you uh, take a look at AdmiralMarkets.com for analytics and uh, also for some webinars. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up there uh, with an expansion of the MetaTrader for Supreme Edition. So I think you'll enjoy that at AdmiralMarkets.com. You'll find out more information about that. Uh, if you want to set up an account, you can do that through us. We give an extra course, uh, two courses, in fact. So that's something that might you find it, that you might find interesting. Also, some extra credit that you can use to order uh, tools and systems. So I think that would be a beneficial deal uh, for you. All right. Regarding this particular webinar, we're going to take a look at uh, Harp Chat, but maybe also switch and take a look at Acu uh, Murray Math System and perhaps even just blank charts. Let's see how far we can get. First of all, though, uh, regarding the Harp Charts, you are able to get a, a free demo for the next uh, three weeks or so. Uh, so you can try it yourself as you look along with these webinars on Tuesday, Wednesday for the next three weeks. We have webinars each day at 4 p.m. Central European time. Uh, we have uh, basically 30 minutes or so where we take a look at the Harp Charts. So you can practice with those charts yourself uh, just by requesting a demo through our website or email address, which is info at elitecurrency.com. So the first thing we're looking for with the Harp Charts, we're looking for trending environment, preferably. Uh, basically, we want to see Haikanashi and the blue uh, on the oscillators at the bottom. That's when we have momentum and a trend. That's what we're looking for regarding with, with the trend trading. We're also looking to make sure that there are no filters, no strong support or resistance levels uh, nearby. If we're trading intraday, we wouldn't want to go long right in front of pivot point resistance, for instance. Then we want to check on a time frame lower if the momentum is there, there and we're looking specifically for a pullback within the trend and a continuation. Once we have that, we'll be looking for setups. We have different ways of tackling uh, the, the setup, basically, Harp. Uh, charts are more a charting package, but we do have systems in the charts, basically. But we view them as a charting package with a lot of you know, different material that you can use to analyze and tackle the markets. One of the things we've been focusing on the last few weeks is basically the setup where we have the oscillator losing its counter trend momentum and basically going from uh, basically going from dark red to light red, indicating the turn on the oscillator. All right, enough said about that. Let's take a look at the charts. All righty, uh, today in the Advent Workers webinar, I said, if the four hour candle is bearish, I'm looking for DAZ head continuation. Well, look at that. We've got a bearish candle indeed. Strong close near uh, the low. This morning, we were looking purely at candlesticks. In fact, no indicators at all. Um, and uh, that, of course, looked a bit different than this particular chart. Now, when the candle closed, we got indeed the uh, confirmation of downside on the harp charts too. Look at the arrow on the four hour world breaking below what I consider a key fractal with this big, big circle here. That is a key fractal. We're pushing through that. So I do think we're seeing some potential for downside continuation on the four hour chart. We also have uh, basically our oscillators are showing got downtrend. The ECS MACD is showing that our momentum indicator is showing that. And also our oscillator momentum is showing that all of it have turned down. As you can see, momentum is down, down, down at the moment after that four hour candle turned bearish, as I said, which was key, a uh, key factor in whether we get that downside or not. If this would have been a, a doji, if this would have been a big wick, I think that would have been a bullish sign. It was clearly a bearish close. And I, we do, we did get indeed that signal. So I think it looks bearish. There's nothing, uh, to say about this four hour chart except bearishness. So from that point of view, if we look at the hourly chart, 
uh, you can see that slight we had a slight retracement here and there was that potential to look for continuation on uh, this this chart if it would have retraced deeper or on the 50 minute chart of course if we would have gotten the completion of the, the basically the turnaround on this 50 minute chart after the retracement so the retracement went into as you see on the momentum indicator from light red to dark blue and then we lost the dark blue uh, here and here uh, both of those could have been uh, good setups uh, for shorts and prices falling as we speak so that could have been a good retracement opportunities on uh, the dollar 50 minute chart and if you took those uh, you'd be up almost around 30 pips i think the target is either the s2 or the next one would be the M0 at 111.80.83. At this particular point, we still have momentum on the 15 minute chart. So we got momentum on all time frames, four hour, one hour, 15. So I think from that point of view, uh, we could even look for a five minute pullback here as a continuation, let's say five minute world were to retrace up to the M1 and then turn around. I think that could be an interesting setup for yet one more push I am not a big fan of trading necessarily beyond the S2, uh, as you might know. So that's the only disadvantage of such a setup. But if it retraces deep enough, like to the M1, uh, because the pivot points are pretty close to each other, there's not, you know, they're bunched up pretty near each other. So there's not a lot of space. I think that price, uh, you know, doesn't have to necessarily stop at the S2 today. Uh, and generally, I don't, generally speaking, I don't like it too much to trade below S2 or above R R2. But in this case, I think it wouldn't be that bad because the pivot points are, are so tight and so close. All right. Let's see if we get the momentum or not. Uh, we'll find out soon enough. I was even trading uh, Harp on the one minute chart last week, Friday with the pound, had some great trades, made 300 pips actually within about one and a half hours on the pound yen, pound odd, and pound dollar. The pound odd was a one minute trade. And I was scalping basically on the one minute chart with five minute momentum on my side. And uh, that was some great trades. I think I made 60 pips on that on Friday. Uh, so, you know, when the momentum is strong, you can sometimes really catch, even on lower time frame, some significant movement. Now, I, I want to add basically one more thing and some good news for you, uh, you know, that's not connected to this analysis. Basically, just to round up the euro dollar analysis, I think that we're looking for a pullback continuation on this five minute chart um, before you know this is tradable, even on the minute chart, because we're past the S2. If we were to dive into the minute chart, then um, I think that one second that uh, you know this is a bit too far from past the S2, but here on the one minute chart, you can see even here it was a good signal halfway this five minute fall when it was challenging the M1. As you can see here, uh, we had bigger, that was the 15 minute turnaround, but here was a, a bit of a pause on the one minute chart and still a push through there. I'm not saying the one minute chart is the best, but it's interesting how that, you know, still shows on, uh, on that time frame. Anyhow, that's the euro dollar. Five minute chart I think makes the most sense. Regarding the good news that I wanted to share with you is that soon the dashboard and alert system will be completed, which means that we're going to have, uh, you know, a bit less manual task. There will be less um, things to monitor when you look at uh, the HARP system. You know, because of the flexibility that HARP offers regarding trading, basically, on many many time frames, many currency pairs. Um, you know there are different types of trading that are possible: swing trading, long-term trading, intraday uh, scalps. It could be sometimes because of that freedom, it could be a bit you know a bit difficult to decide what to trade, and that is going to be solved by the dashboard and the alert system. We're going to have basically uh, or giving you the flexibility to choose which time frame you're interested in. And then that alert system will be based on that choice, which means that you will get an alert. Uh, we still have to test it. Uh, we're, you know, we're not that far yet, but I hope, and I might be pushing this, but I hope two, three weeks from now, we will have that all set up and, you know, traders can then set up their dashboard and have accompanied 
MT4 or email alert connected to that. So I'm very excited about that, that it's coming so soon. And um, yeah, I just can't wait for that to happen. I think it's going to make trading a lot easier. So, you know, that is, that's the good news, basically. So that's coming soon. So once again, if you're interested, just uh, in, in testing this, first of all, just let us know through the website or email. All right, uh, these are the pound, I still have these trades here. These are the pound USD trades that I took last week, as you can see uh, right here. Some looks like a small trade, but it's not that bad. It was, those are the entries. It was 30 pips and 40. Now, yeah, that's not much maybe compared to the, the default that the pound made, but I'm still still happy with those trades. Let's take a look what's going on now. This is uh, basically Friday. Of course, we had that great fall, and you can see momentum on the daily chart to the downside. On the four-hour chart as well, on the hourly chart, we're retracing basically. 15-minute chart. We had a choppy day so far on the on the pound USD 15-minute chart. Let me uh, move over here to the standard template. All right, there we go. All right. So I'm not. We have an arrow here. We do, and uh, we got a couple of arrows, in fact, already, all around the same place. I don't think it makes sense to take all three setups. In fact, price is right at knocking right at the support level. So probably not the best place to go short right now. But if it breaks through this 141 level, let's say 141, uh, then that could be an interesting potential to look at a five-minute chart and look for a bit of a pullback there uh, before taking this trade. We don't have the 50-minute oscillator as yet. As you can see, this is just about to turn. Otherwise, we have all time frames momentum. So I think that from this perspective, maybe the hourly could be set up for a down trade, but not the uh, not the 15 or five. Let's see here, these, these one hour candles, for instance, here with the arrows, those could be swing setups. We do have diamonds, as you can see here, red diamonds indicating the downtrend also on the four hour chart so that's all good to go and uh, we've got a good downtrend um, so from this perspective you know when you get an arrow after the after the diamonds and if you get a turn on the escalator here uh, and generally speaking that's a that's a pretty good uh, spot to go short now the escalator didn't retrace all too deeply it didn't go up to for instance like this here up to the blue that would have been even better short because then the retracement is is stronger so this was the better short right up in here this one is a bit riskier because the retracement has not been that that steep all right let me open my drawing tool quickly all right so as you can see anyone who took these shorts with these arrows or if you took the short upon the oscillator turn from thick to thin right here uh, is up nicely with that trade uh, about 100 and pips so far. At this particular time, I don't think a swing trade is the best. Technically speaking, we have a setup. But considering these, these bottoms here, this double bottom potential, 141, I think it's better to monitor the break on this time frame and wait for a clear 50-minute candle to push through to S1. Wait for a bounce at S1, even on the five-minute chart, all right, for price to hook back to 141, and then look for an arrow or an oscillator turn uh, at, the, at around 141. So something like this in terms of my drawing tool, like this. Later uh, in this London session or uh, the end of New York session, All right? Later today. I would not take it in the Asian session because then, uh, you know, the pound dollar tends to quiet down. I don't think that would be a wise moment to, to to enter trade on the pound in the quiet time uh, either after new york or in asian session all right but obviously we do have doubt, uh, bearish pressure it's just waiting for a break it's waiting for uh, things to set up 
regarding the harp charts after we break this bottom. All right? Technically, we do have a setup on the hourly. I just don't think it makes, from a filter point of view, it's wise to enter a trade right here. All right, next on the list, we've got dollar yen momentum. Very simple, you can see momentum here. Dark red on the oscillator. Four hour chart, we got dark red. We just lost a bit of momentum here. One hour chart is retracing as well. 15 minute chart is upside. So we don't have really confluence, I would say, between any, any charts that make sense to trade at this particular point. In fact, I think that just waiting on the, on the dollar yen yeah, it makes the most sense. I said in this morning's webinar with Admiral Markets, in fact, that I'm looking for a bit of a bullish bounce on uh, the dollar yen or bearish break. Uh, and I would not know if we got, I don't think we got any of those. Let me check. Well, we didn't get a bearish break of this level, did we? And this could be, if this candle turns bullish, this, this would be the second four hour bullish candle. If it's a decent sized candle with a close near the high, that could be actually a signal of a bearish, a bullish bounce. So unless this 105.54 gets broken, I'm not looking for shorts at this point. Too strong of a, a support level. All right, Ozzy. Honestly, it looks like a retracement. We've got a good strong candle on the four hour chart. That could be a continuation signal. We got our arrow. We do not have any red diamonds as yet. So this could be just a retracement and not a downtrend as yet. You can see, you know, the best trends typically occur when we get red diamonds or we get red or we get green uh, diamonds for upside. So there's still a circle here. So that means that we're still not on a full fledged downtrend, but we do have. Uh, you know, everything aligned regarding momentum, which is not in a downtrend as yet. So we got to treat it a bit more with more caution. Uh, the hourly chart did make a good retracement up. Price is retracing as we speak. 15 minute chart, well below the pivot point. And from this point of view, I think this could be a decent retracement. We got an arrow on a five. We got a 50 minute loss of blue. And more importantly, the oscillator turn here. So does this subscribe to everything we're looking for? Well, not really, because the hourly, I think, as you can see, lost momentum. So from that perspective, I would not be looking for a 15-minute setup. I'm looking for momentum on one time frame and then looking for a pullback continuation on, on one lower time frame or two lower time frames. So I think that the momentum is not strong enough at this point to trade it. I know that this morning I said, you know, looking at, this candle, a retracement of that candle could be a setup. So from that perspective, yeah, this could be an entry right here with a stop loss above it. But from a heart perspective, I think that the momentum loss at this point is visible on multiple time frames. I don't think it's a good setup at this moment. Uh, what have, would have to change for me to trade it on the hourly is, is I would need to see... Um, I would need to see basically momentum kick back in here with uh, with a dark red Heiken Ashi candle. All right. Uh, pound odd could be in a retracement mode. I was kind of taking a, a counter trend trade. Basically, the trend is still down. In all honesty, looking at uh, the four hour chart, you can see light red daily is down. But considering the price action I took this trade, this is more price action oriented. It has nothing really, it's not connected to HARP necessarily. Um, it was based on this bullish candle that we saw here. I talked about it this morning, this bullish candle. Basically as a hook back, failure to break this bottom. And then, well, basically uh, as a, yeah, as a, as a reversal trade based on that support as well. Regarding HARP, I would say that we are not in a strong momentum on intraday time frames at this point. So I don't think there's anything there for us at this point. Let's take a look at pound yen and euro yen. 50 minute chart is retracing here, unfortunately. So no trend there. 
And it's a bit unfortunate because at the moment we're just building basically flags, as you can see, on, uh, on a 50 minute chart. And what I wanted to do today was actually look at five minute charts to look for five or one minute setups as, a, as an intraday trading. But if the 50 minute world is looking like this, that is not you know, the good thing to do. Let's take a look at the Euro Yen is a bit better. Euro Yen did move into bearish territory just now. I think the Euro Yen looks a lot better. We're below the pivot. We still have phase to S2. We're getting momentum as we speak. We don't have one hour momentum, but it's retracing and still down. We've got a red arrow too. We've got everything aligned to the downside. So I think that is okay. Look at the moving averages. Look at the arrow and uh, look at these oscillators. And the reason why we have that many oscillators uh, is just basically to help with confidence. How many times are we not self-doubting trades? How many times are we not kind of reflecting, giving our opinion, wondering? And you know, the, the multi, multi kind of, not only multi time frame, but also the multi view per time frame is that extra confidence, that extra confluence, that extra um, boost to psychological boost to, to not only take a trade, but also stay in a trade and believe that that trade can work out because ultimately we're pretty good at talking ourselves out of trades or taking, talking ourselves out of uh, staying in a trade, despite maybe the fact that our rules are still uh, okay, the trade is still okay, etc. So this is hard charts is, is, is trying to give easy color confluence and confidence to ourselves. So when we look at the euro yen, we can see that there are a lot of trends in downside, and, and that's of course the dashboard is going to make easy uh, and give a, a give a kind of a quick overview right away. Monthly is down. Look at the bearish momentum here. Weekly is down. Daily is down. Four hour is down. The only the only time frame that's actually retracing is the hourly at this point. Um, so anyhow, 50 minute chart is down. So five minute chart is down as you can see. So let's take a look at the one minute chart. Euro yen seems to be the best one actually for short time frame trading. Let's go. Let's take a look at the one minute chart. All righty, what do we got here? We got five minute momentum since this point right here. All righty. So yeah, there are plenty of signals I think here to, to look for potential continuation down. These are just kind of triggers, uh, entry triggers. They don't have to be necessarily perfect. And consider the momentum. I think that this is not a bad setup. We broke S1. So let's try it. Let's put the stop loss. Um, above the M2, obviously, at around. And these tops and these fractals at around, uh, well, 111. What, sorry, 119.13. There we go. So let's try how this goes, and we'll put the TP. There's a 75% chance if we break S1 that we'll get to M1. Price did break S1, but didn't get to M1, so we got stats on our side. So if we aim for a very conservative target at the M1 at 1840, 18.44, that would how much how much would that be? 34 pips. Our risk is about the same. That would be a one-to-one -one trade. All right. Now, that's not a great R2R, um, but I think the chance of this succeeding is pretty high, so that would compensate the one-to-one R2R ra uh, ratio. If, you know, if someone is a bit more ambitious and is aiming for S2, you can get a bit more, obviously, more potential profit, and it's very well possible that it could just blast down to S2. One way to tackle that would be to basically just leave the TP open and trail stop it or put the TP at S2 or M0. It depends how conservative or aggressive you want to be. If you want to be conservative, I would say aim for the 
the target that's closer by, if you want to be a bit more aggressive, aim for a lower target and trail stop that. All right, that, that depends on your psychology too. Uh, but I think that uh, there's a good chance of this hitting the target. So we'll go back to this. It looks already to be going our way, so that's good. But we'll go back in it just a second as price develops. I do think though that clearly you can see everything aligned. And with these color codes on the harp charts, I think it makes things very intuitively, it makes things very easily to spot um, direction and setups. Uh, you know, if, if you're wondering about this, I think that everything is aligned. You got, I just showed you all the momentum on all these different time frames, all the arrows and oscillators. And, you know, we got a good red candle here after a decent retracement. We got uh, not only a red arrow, but a red candle here. So, and we're seeing hopefully the follow through of that. Time will tell, but this looks pretty good. All right. So, what else? We talked about most of the majors, I think. Let me just scan these charts to see if there's anything that could be interesting. The URI odd seems to be turning. We do have diamonds at the bottom here. On the four hour chart, we got diamonds. We got a red diamonds, four hour, one hour chart. So that's indicating a downtrend, but we're just seeing a, you know, a big consolidation. And we do see green diamonds on the daily. So there's a bit of conflict here, uptrend, but down momentum. You see that we got green diamonds, but we got red momentum. So there is a bit of a, a split there. Uh, so if we break through these support fractals, that could be the end of that uh, uptrend on the euro odd. And we're about to break through that, I guess. So from a swing trade perspective, if we push through these support levels right here and we see red momentum kick in here as we as we break through that support, then I think we can dive into the hourly chart and look for pullbacks for further downside. All right, you're in New Zealand. Looks pretty much the same. Also momentum here. So I think as soon as this loses on a five minute chart, loses the oscillator, or let's say the, the oscillator turns, or we get a red arrow, I think we could see a continuation uh, down to S1 and M1 on the Euro Zealand 2. Now you want to be careful uh, to take you know setups that are so similar to each other, like the Euro and the Euro New Zealand. If you're already in one, um, you just just be aware of your risk management as you do that. If you see multiple currencies that are you know, related to each other, from that point of view, it could be good to take a look at the correlation matrix from admin markets. Correlation matrix, right? And you can see uh, whether the currency pair you are taking is closely correlated to the one uh, negatively or positively to the, to the other currency pair that you already entered. Uh, because taking let's say a similar setup could be risky. So just be aware of that from a risk management point of view. Uh, yeah, from that point of view, once again, Euro New Zealand looks pretty similar to the Euro odd. We have a lot of momentum to the downside on all these time frames. Um, maybe not not in the four hour, that's the difference, but we do do have a turn in the four hour though here. And we do have uh, weekly daily down and hourly. And I think that we can all see that this was a corrective upside here. And that we're trying to, uh, we reached a uh, turnaround level as the long-term moving averages. And we have red diamonds on the four hour, one hour chart. So that's important. So I, I do think that this is a, a good setup. One more minute left, I think. Seven seconds left until this candle closes. We'll see if we get a, an arrow and if we get an oscillator turn. There we go. We got the arrow. I'm not sure about the oscillator turn. We got the oscillator turn as well. So just for example sakes, I'm not sh you know sure if that would necessarily be logical if I'm already in a year odd. But for example sakes, uh, I would go with the stop loss. above the pivot point. 
160.10. And that's a wide stop loss, I know, but this is a year in New Zealand, and it does tend to have wider stop losses because it's just a bigger pair, uh, or it's a bigger moving pair, I should say. All right, let's go back to that euro odd and see how that's going. Uh, no, I was... Uh, you're a yen, excuse me. I'm getting those two mixed up. All right, uh, so, yeah, we're a bit ahead. Had a bit of a, a bit of a bounce at the S1 again, but I think that's just... A, I hope that's just... I think that's going to be just a small bounce. In fact, uh, we still have momentum. The candles are still red. So as long as these candles stay red, we should be doing fine. And as long as this momentum stays red, we should be A-OK. -okay. All right, so... I think there's nothing to worry about. Let's see how this develops as price gets lower and lower, hopefully. I think that nothing much changed. So uh, let's take a look at the one-minute chart, perhaps, even. There we go. Nothing new here. These are all kind of signals, red arrows, and, you know, Changes of oscillators, and you know you don't want to exaggerate it. You don't want to take too many, in this, or preferably not all, or not uh, not any double trades. I should say, you know, in the same zone, that doesn't make sense. So, and yeah, we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, basically, last Friday I had some great trades on Harp regarding uh, pound yen two was beautiful trades up in here, as you can see. That was about seventy pips. Let's take a look at that. Last week, Friday, small. It looks like small trades, but it was really, really good uh, number of pips. But you know how this pound yen moves? It moves so fast that even 70 pips doesn't look like much. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where is it? I probably went too far. Hang on, folks. There we go. Uh, split the entry in two parts now. As I said, it all depends on your risk management. I just took small risk, so I divided my entry in two parts. Once One entry was when the oscillator turned. That was here. And one entry was when I got an arrow, which was here. So instead of taking, let's say, a normal risk on one setup and putting all my all the eggs in one basket, I, put, I took a trade with lower risk at one setup and then added, a, again, a smaller risk with another test. Uh, setup type. All right, so that also allowed me to easily. Well, you can do this anyhow, but if I, you know, exited the th two different spots. Basically, one was no, I no, I exited that the same spot right here at the pivot point for about fifty and seventy pips. Price made another correction and then fell and. You know, of course, if I would have maybe hanged in there, I could have gotten more profit. But then again, look, it was only about how many candles? 10, 500 candles. It was within an hour, basically. The trade was open and closed, which is also a good feeling from a psychological point of view that the trade isn't open too long. And you got those pips, you know, relatively quickly. Let's face it, an hour is, is, is fast, right? The same thing was uh, also for the pound odd. So those are good trades for the pound last week, Friday. All right. So anyhow, I think that at this moment, from a trade management perspective, I would probably not do anything unless... Let's see. If this hour, if this hour um, doesn't close bearish and it closes like a doji or bullish, even worse, then I would try to exit at break even or a small loss. But if this is bearish, so this hourly candle, I think that our target should be okay. Uh, there is a bit of a bounce at the S1. Unfortunately, it's didn't expect it because we already kind of 
broke that S1, so I just hoped for a, a kind of a quick break through that level. It is kind of respecting that, but we do have momentum left. We have red candles. We still uh, have an oscillator that's down on the 15 and 5. So it should be okay, but if we don't reach our target in the next 25 minutes, then I might just exit and um, take this trade as is. You're in New Zealand. Let's see if that's the same. You're in New Zealand. I think I'll have a bit more patience, perhaps, because that's a good hourly candle, and we still have plenty of time. We just broke, actually, this fractal. So in regard of the Euro New Zealand, I think I would give it... Let's see. I'm just calculating quickly. Probably the next one and a half hours. If it doesn't reach my S1 target or M1 target, I think for, for the moment I'll aim for S1, 159.16. And the secondary target could be M1. Then I would also think about trail stopping or exiting if it doesn't reach the target within one and a half hours. Right? We're looking for a trade, preferably with in London slash start of New York, morning New York. If we don't get the follow through, we might get New York lunchtime. And that could be a period of consolidation. We might still get the continuation on both of these to the downside in New York lunch, uh, after New York lunch, more in the European evening. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a follow through. So those, those trades are always still out there, still possible. Um, if we get the if we get the signals and if the momentum still is you know the trend and momentum still look good. All right, well, folks, let's see. Last thing, last look at the pound USD. Trying to break as we speak but not a clear break as yet. So we're not sure how that will break, if it will break, but if it does, I think pound dollar will continue lower. Dollar yen looking for a reversal bounce, but that's you know not harp, that's more my own analysis. And uh, your yen and your New Zealand look good for downside at this point. From a swing trade perspective, last but not least, I think that there's maybe not that much from a swing trade perspective, I think, at this point, if anything, perhaps perhaps upside on the Kiwi, all right, because we got weekly and daily up, four hours of tracing, but this could be a correction. We got green candles on the four hour, green uh, diamonds on the daily and four hour, and one hour even. All right, all we need is a bit of momentum. All right, so if the momentum kicks back in, and we got blue bars here on the hourly and a retracement, something like this, for instance. Oh. I think that the, you know we could see potential for upside because so far the downside has been pretty corrective. So if there's any swing trade, I think actually potential upside on this Kiwi, for instance. All right, folks, any, any questions? Otherwise, we'll wrap it up for today. And uh, you can, of course, always keep an eye on this Twitter handle right here. Let me write that down for you quickly. I hang on. There you go. This Twitter handle. Let me make that a bit different color, like this. Good. And uh, if you're interested in Brexit. Make sure to check out this hashtag. 
MA, MA Animal Markets Brexit FAQ. Nanette and I are keeping an eye on that. We'll answer your questions. We also have a webinar with Animal Markets on Thursday evening and next week, Tuesday, about the British referendum regarding their membership in the EU. So you can use that to communicate with us. And well, folks, wish you all good trading. Let's see how these two trades go. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, I hope that uh, my trade management uh, idea is clear. If not, you can always reach me through email or Twitter. And uh, talk to you soon, folks. Cheers. <laughs>